time one slash bishi and let's play some more Final Fantasy XIV. I promise I will get to playing other games besides Final Fantasy, it's just uh, they seem to have been doing events pretty close together since uh, Endwalker dropped, so this is um, their Valentine's Day event. As you can tell, for those who uh, skipped the last event because there were clowns in it, I um, was mindful of all of you and I changed out of the clown attire before I started recording. So you're welcome. Uh, this event starts in Gridania again. So let's talk to the set de Valention. No love lost. The set de Valen Valention has her mitts full this Val Valention's day. It is a season of ardor and affection, and romance is thick upon the air. I, Lisette of, of House Valentione, entreat you and entreat you, dearest one, to breathe deep and take love's rich richness. It's cloy, cloying rosy radi radiance into your bosom. Alas, every rose has its thorns, and even in this fairest of seasons, is not without its trials. Indeed, trouble is afoot and it threatens the hearts of all in this realm. A fellow of ours, a mogul well versed in the myriad matters of the heart, has found himself in quite the quagmire. A sweet thing of which we speak goes by the name of Kup Kupka Kup and is an emissary of pen passions and all Billets Deuce. I think that's how you said that. Valentine's Day is a joyous occasion, but not always so for those who acquit themselves as post moogles in the realm. Koop, Koopka Koop has his poor paws full delivering heartwarming missives far and wide, hither and thither. Though he would never admit it, I fear he is at his wit's end. But you, beloved adventurer that you are, can provide precisely what our her her suit herald requires oh so desperately. Pray lend Koopka Koopo uh, Koopka Koop your talents and retrieve him from the edge whereupon his wits now te 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 teether so precariously. Wow. Uh. <clears throat> sure. So, I think a lot of these answers are similar. So, for Tengibishi, I'm gonna do a working adventure is a happy adventure. And then for Silent Ghost, I'll put if I must. There, you can sing it better. <laughs> Marvelous, you are a hero through and through. Koopka Koop will be so relieved. I shall fetch him at once. I know at some point I also need to uh, advance the storyline, and I will, I will, I promise. Ah! Why, yours is a face I know well. No introduction necessary, friends. For so rena re renowned are you that I feel as if I have known you all my life. My post mogul compatriots speak of your during do almost nightly, Koopa. How they will bristle into puffballs when I tell them we are acquainted. Which could be. Now then, I hear from Ast Astrid. I think that's how you say it. 
that you would help me in my hour of need, for which I am most grateful. However, it's not the work itself that vexes me, but rather a colleague of mine, a clueless courier newly inducted into our vocation. Every Valentine's Day, we emissaries are overtaxed, and this season has proven no exception. I had hoped to nip this issue in the bud by petitioning the deputy post mogul for a helping paw or two. He obliged, but has sent someone altogether worthless, an undisciplined Tyro. Wow. To make matters worse, the daft thing is painfully ignorant in the ways of the heart. You should hear the way she speaks to the clientele. One ugly gift. Love must be blind. And such nonsense. Left to her own devices, I fear she will ruin Valentine's Day, Koopo. <laughs> Give the girl the axe, you cry. The impulse is very much with me, I assure you. But I can't rightly turn away the very existence for which I beg. I would come across as the most wretched ingrate to ever have wings. Yet I haven't the time to train her, let alone the patience. Fret not, our harried herald. You are right to have sought our help, for I have come upon the cleverness of s solutions to your predicament. We shall enlist the help of our dower tree adventurer and house Valention's very own Astrid to accompany our callous courier. Said callous courier. That we're like, what? <laughs> You cannot be surprised at my suggestion. Tis the most natural fit. So skilled, tiny, so skilled in many subjects, will teach her assistant the delicate art of the post, while Astrid shall instruct the mogul in the ways of ardor and adoration. There, a splendid plan if I say so myself. Why I suddenly feel congested, I have no idea. I'm so sorry. Are you both sure you're up for the task? It isn't too great a bother? We're like, sure. What a seasonable relief indeed, Kubo. I shall bring her to you at once, for there is not a moment to lose. This could be allergies because I had the door open all day today. And it's starting to get warmer, so of course all the allergens are starting to kick up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this burb. Look at that cute burb. Oh my gosh. May I introduce you to my fledgling post mobile charge? Kukti Pico and her loyal chocobo. Erm. Um, oh dear, this is rather awkward. I confess your friend's name has slipped my mind, Kubo. Salutations, one and all. As for my Chocobo, his name can't have slipped your mind because he hasn't got one. He has, because he hasn't one. Aw, you should name your bird. I refer to him simply as my partner, dear. Or when I'm feeling particularly silly, bird. Many an acquaintance of mine has attempted to bride him a name or two. But none of them ever stick. Or shall I say, I always forget them. Same though. Like I try to give names to things, like stuffies and all that, and yeah, I I forget them too. In any case, you may call him whatever you like. It makes no difference, least of all to him. Look how cute! Aww. Yes. Well, be that as it may, I have test. T. Pico with three deliveries, all of which I would ask you to join her on. These two are to accompany me? Very well. Who am I to turn away? Whomever you are. Our first stop is the Carpenter's Guild. Bird and I shall wait you there. Thankfully, with this, I can uh, teleport. 
unlike with the uh, Christmas event. Okay, carpenter skill. Oh, that's right. Carpenter skill is over here. My brain errored for a second. I'm like, where am I going? Oh, well, like, I don't see Carpenter's Guild. And then I realized Carpenter's Guild is like right next to uh, this main Atherite right here. Uh, this way. Oh, the recipient is out on an errand or some such. A pity. As for the parcel, well, since no one is available to take it, I say we just leave it any old place. There are other assignments to be getting on with after all. No! <laughs> oh my god. I say, hold there a minute. I am no post removal, granted. But merely abandoning a package like this before a door seems a touch disrespectful, does it not? What we have here is a gift, an item crafted with love and care. It deserves to be treated as such. Who is this from exactly? A young woman, if memory serves. Daughter to the man meant to receive this. Oh yes, and there was something about her training at the Culinary Guild, I think. My memory is hazy. You need to know these type of details. I'm gonna say we ought to make the delivery in person. Hmm, you make an interesting point. The man is on an errand, yes? And since he's with the Carpenter's Guild, it stands to reason he is out collecting lumber, and from the Botanist Guild, like as not. We shall start our search there, for Valentino's day gift must be delivered straight into the recipient's hands. Slime mold. Okay. It's chocolate biscuit. <laughs> Alrighty. And fiction. Got some interesting names tonight. Neon Nightmare. Yeah, that's a normalish name. Oh. At first I thought that was uh Spam to report. But no. <laughs> All right, let's go to the button. Also, just to let you know, I have gotten a new webcam. Um, if you saw my latest Twitch stream, uh, twitch.tv slash the tiny bishi, I tested it out. Uh, my only issue is uh, I know how to do it on stream, but I'm not quite sure how to set up. Oops, it's supposed to be up here. I don't quite know how to set up my webcam for when I record videos, so I'm still learning that. Once I get to learn that, um, I'll probably start adding um, <clears throat> adding my little my little face to uh, to the bottom corner. Probably what I'm gonna do is cover up the chat box. 
Because y'all don't really need the chat box. So, yeah, for this game I'll just cover up the little chat box. And then I'll have to figure out how to turn off the cam for... It's, it's pretty simple. I'll just have to figure out how to turn off the cam for, like, cutscenes and that sort of stuff. A delivery for you, sir. You weren't at the guild when we came calling, so we took the liberty of tracking you down. Hello! Right in my face. Alright, give it here then. Oh, what's all this? Valentino State Chocolate? Now this is a surprise. My daughter's an apprentice at the Culinarians Guild, you see. I'd heard she'd been selected to make the chocolates for the festivities this year, but I certainly didn't expect to receive any myself. And how wonderful that you did! It's not every day one's daughter's accorded the honor of crafting such a beloved confectionery. She must be quite the culinarian. That she is. My pride and joy, that girl. What a pleasant surprise this package was. Certainly made my day. I can't thank you enough for bringing it all the way out to me like you have. I'll never forget this kindness. Goodness, seems like a bit of an overreaction for being handed some food, doesn't it? No. He appreciated that we delivered it with care. Agreed. There is a lesson to be learned here, Pukti. Joy is not meant to be kept to oneself. It is a feeling that yearns to be shared, and we played a part in bringing him happiness. So it is little wonder that he wished to share his felicity with us. So joy is meant to be shared? Hmm. Well, when you put it that way, I suppose that's not so foreign a concept. When something makes me smile or laugh, I do tend to talk to my companion's ear off about it, and I've often made the happier for it. <whistles> uh, the bird agrees. But enough about that. Time is wasted. Best be off to our next delivery. The recipient awaits at the Whistling Miller by the looks of it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, back to the teleportation crystal. Now this Valentine's Day is, well, I should say every Valentine's Day is not good for me considering that. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Valentine's Day is not really a good day for me, considering that it's a day filled with chocolate and all that, and I am allergic to chocolate. I think the only chocolate I can really have is white chocolate or foreign chocolate, or most foreign chocolate, I should say. But the problem is, uh, uh it's a cute little, uh, Little creature. I completely forgot the name of it. Carbuncle. Uh, the problem though is on a day like Valentine's Day, it's filled with all sorts of milk chocolate and dark chocolate and very, very little white chocolate, which is the chocolate I can eat. So it just, it sucks for me because I am surrounded by it in the day. Basically, so from Christmas all the way up until Easter, yeah, all the way up until Easter, at least, I'm just bombarded with, no, 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 I'm sorry, Halloween. Starts on Halloween and then all the way until Easter. And sometimes Mother's Day too. I'm just surrounded by all this chocolate that 
I can't eat. Like, I can have it around me. I can be smelling it, which is very tempting. Um, I just can't put it in my mouth and ingest it. That's what would be bad for me. I'm not that allergic that just having it near me will cause a reaction. Just jealousy that others can have it and I can't. Well, technically I can, but it would be bad consequences. Let's just put it that way. Pardon me, but I had a delivery for you, ma'am. For me? Oh, it's from one of my dearest companions. And look what they've sent. Pink seashells. Are they not extraordinary? Look at their vibrancy. Ah, uh, and a card. Happy Valentine's Day. How delightful. <coughs> Shells. Empty ones. You can't even eat those. At least the other fellow received chocolate. Dudes. Poop. Tea. That is abominably rude. You must forgive our friend here. She is not accustomed to deliveries such as this. There is nothing to forgive, I assure you. I could hardly be upset after receiving a gift like this. And from a loved one I've not seen in quite some time. My friend, you see, is an adventurer in their own right. They enjoy being cryptic, though, and never outright tell me where they've been. Rather, they make me guess by dropping hints in the form of curiosities such as these. What a blessing this parcel is. I was only just wondering how they were faring and where their journeys have brought them. Thank you, Miss Postmogul. You'll brighten my day. <coughs> Love is a mystery indeed, and a funny one at that. It is my pleasure to tell you, Poopti, that love is a many splendored thing, and we each have our own unique way of expressing it. The friendship between that girl and her adventure companion is a perfect example. That gift, which appeared mere frippin' frip, frip, bird-ry to you, was a treasure in her eyes. It is important for adventurers to check in with our loved ones. It is oft said that no news is good news, but I very much doubt that to be the case for those in your line of work. So you mean to say that was her friend's way of telling that young woman that all is well? Their way of assogging their worries that she might be harboring about their safety? Hmm, how fascinating. <laughs> to be sure, were I to be separated from my bird here by expansive seas or vast mountain ranges, I'd like to hear from him from time to time. Perhaps not every day. That would be irksome. But to know that he is in good health would not would be not altogether disagreeable, I suppose. <whistles> Aw, Bernie agrees. Anywho, no sense in losing ourselves in thought. Not when a parcel sits burning a hole in my satchel, Koopo. Our next delivery takes us to... Ap... Apkalu Falls. Let's away. Okay. <coughs> so the falls is over here. So let's just... Oh, there we go. Not that far away. Oh, someone has an ugly duckling. Aww. I think it's cute. He's like... <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna leave. And someone had a headshot. A nana bear! Greetings, sir. I have for you here a parcel from one of Olda's pre... Eminent art dealers, Kubo. At last, your earrings, they've arrived. Goodness gracious, how stunning they are. This craftsmanship, this meticulous attention to detail. I couldn't have hoped for a better present for my wife. She'll be over the moon to receive them. Her birthday is coming up, you see. I want to ensure her special day is just that. I've even given Kupka Kup's palm a vigorous pat. 
That did not look like palm to me. I'm sorry. I hear tell that one's touch is enough to bring a couple of happiness for all their years to come. Let us hope so. <clears throat> you did well to bring these all the way out here with that scratch on them, you know. I'd begun to worry that by the time I received them, the poor things would be nothing more than scuffed, dented rocks. You've got a bright future ahead of you in the Postal Service, friend. Thank you. <laughs> now, this is odd. There's a flutter in my chest. A tickle on my stomach, Koopo. Have I taken ill? Or do compliments and words of gratitude always elicit this sort of response? Trust me when I say you are not ill, poop tea. That flutter you feel, those ticklish sensations you describe, that is fondness, a form of love indeed, and it was made manifest by that man's appreciation for what you provided. <laughs> oh, so this love nonsense, why, it isn't nonsense at all, is it? It's quite wonderful, actually. I liken it to that feeling when my bird and I settle down for an afternoon nap in the Twelveswood. When I tuck myself under his wing and we are warned by the sunlight breaking through the trees. <whistles> Perhaps you haven't mastered the concept entirely, but I do believe we are making strides in the right direction. You certainly seem more attuned to the ways of the heart than when we first made your acquaintance at any rate. Now that all three parcels have reached the right hands, let us return to Mia Keto's amphitheater. No doubt, Kupta Kupka Koop is anxious to see how Pukti fared. Hi. Go this way. Honestly, I would have thought there'd be like some Valentine's Day music going on or something. Probably just over in this area. Oh! And before I forget... There is a Valentine's Day mobile that we can get. There we go. That's what it looks like. I really need to like advance the storyline with Silent Ghost so I can get her bound to Day Mobile too. Ooh, let's go this way. Oh yeah, his pomp is um, heart shaped. That's cute. Hey, there are our agents of affection, our heralds of the heart, returned at last and not before time, Koopa. Tell me, how went your deliveries? Splendid, each and every one. The recipients were thrilled to receive their parcels, and I'm pleased to say that Pooti Pico learned something along the way. Yes, I do believe I did. Love is, well, it's a bit more complicated than I first imagined it to be. There are hidden depths to it, ones I didn't see before. I may not be an expert on the subject yet, but I would like to think my ignorance is not quite as dire as it once was. You are making progress, certainly. I'm glad of it. And just so long as you did not offend anyone, I could not ask for more. Anywho, I am indebted to you. Astrid, I am indebted to you, Astrid, Tiny. You have spared at least three citizens of the realm from potential cruelty. However unintended it may have been. No, I am being too harsh. Kukti, you've shown a true concerted effort to understand the la labyrinthian complexities of the heart. And as a reward, I am inclined to set to you another task. For in truth, your work is not yet finished. Much more is there to be done this Valentine's Day, Kupo. And you when you have the time, speak to me again, and I shall tell you about it.
Loves labors. Kupka Kop. A Kupka Koop. Has a matter of the heart on his mind. There you are, and not a moment too soon. Your unwavering devotion to the ways of ardor and affection, love and romance, courtship and intimacy is both commendable and deeply appreciated. So to the task of which we of which I spoke, it involves a woman by the name of Alois who only just posted a parcel with no small amount of urgency. However, she then returned, begging us to call off its delivery, a highly unusual request, and her, uh, and her eyes, twin pools of sorrow, Cooper. She fled straight away, ere I could even, ere I could even get my bearings, let alone ask what the troubles, what troubles her so. Will you help me seek her out? <laughs> you are too kind. Now, as for this young woman, she is an Elysian of great beauty, and thus should not be an easy one to overlook. Last I saw of her, she had just made a sharp left at the fork of the road, unless my eyes deceive me. To the left, you say? That way lies the great long growery, if I'm not mistaken. I will accompany you there. Cup, cup, coop. Tiny. Cook tea, pigo. You two will look near Nofika's altar. Should you come upon her before we do, come find us at the grout growery. I was about to say, when is it going to give me the, uh, question? So, we're supposed to go... Oh, I see, right there. Conjurer is good. Alois, why do you ask? Is it just me, or does she look like she's dressed like Mary Jane from, uh, or is it Mary, is it, Mar no, not Mary Jane, Jane from, um, uh, what's it called, Jungle Book. Not Jungle Book, Tarzan. Gave my... Disney movies mixed up. It's been a while. Kupka Koop wants to see me, you say, but whatever for? <laughs> he is beside himself with worry, Koopa. He told us you turned tail and darted off looking dreadfully stricken, downright mor mor morose. You can understand his concern, surely. I see. I owe him an apology for worrying him as I have, and an explanation for my frantic flight as well. Kupka is still at Meketo's amphitheater, correct? I'll go to him at once. Actually, he... Never mind, she's already gone. I suppose I should go and fetch him then, shall I? Meet us at the amphitheater. And do hurry. We don't... We wouldn't want her dashing off again.
Oh shoot. <clears throat> right there in the thick of people. First, let me start by saying how grateful I am that you would think to come and check on me. The truth of the matter is, I received an offer of marriage I meant to accept, which is why I came to you initially, Kukka, to see that my reply would be delivered safely. However, as I was writing to tell him yes, I found myself hesitating more than I ought to have been. I began to wonder if I was making a terrible decision, not only for me, but for him as well. The man who seeks my hand is of Ishgardian nobility and goes by the name Izolmil. I don't know. At the moment he is, well, he is quite ill and is seeking treatment here in Gridania. Do not misunderstand me. I was overjoyed to hear of his devotion. A life spent with him would be a wonderful thing, but I'm no mobile. I, but I'm no noble, not mobile. I'm of the most common stock, no, no more special than a weed underfoot. I wasn't raised with the aristocratic manners a future wife of his requires. Who am I to marry into nobility? I must destroy my previous mystic and pen a new letter. One telling him I can't go through with it, but that one I'll hand deliver. I won't have an emissary of love delivering such ill tidings. <laughs> now, I don't pretend to be an expert in the ways of heart, but isn't love the desire to be with someone forever and on? The desire for a trusted partner in this world? Someone with whom you can share your joys and your woes? If you care for him, being with him, wouldn't it upset you to do anything but? It certainly seems to have had. I may not have much experience with this, but I know that where I and my chuck that were I and my chuckbo to be separated, I wouldn't like it. Not one bit. I wouldn't I don't believe giving up is the solution, Cooper. Verily, I myself am of Ishgardian nobility and can thus speak from a place of authority. Each of our houses has its own traditions. It is our titles that connect us, not our principles. Before making your decision, seek the counsel of your beloved and learn what his family values. I could not agree more. After all, it is doubts you harbor, not a lack of affection. If you believe his heart to be yours entire, then trust that he will listen to your troubles that you and he can solve them together. Why not send one more letter? Explain what it is that vexes you. Yes, I see your point. It's unfair of me to hide my feelings like this. He sowed my honesty. But how does one even write such a letter? I wouldn't know where to begin. Perhaps you should explain your apprehension about fulfilling your duties as wife to a man of a great house. Make it clear that should you decide to join his social milieu, you will require time to study, learn, and train before you are comfortable. A word of warning, though. To compromise the very woman you are in order to bend to the rigors of nobility may leave you jaded, haggard, and altogether infuriated. Thus, I suggest you first inquire as to whether his family is capable of accepting you as you are. <laughs> Why not simply write down all your worries? I don't fancy myself a poet of passions or what have you, but there's something to be said about getting everything out in the open. <laughs> all of these ideas have a great deal of merit, and each should be given due consideration. Tiny, what say you? Which of these notions have struck a chord with you? Okay. So, since there's three options now, and I have Tiny Bishi, Silent Ghost, and Azuna, I'm going to pick Ask for Help Adapting to His Lifestyle. Silent Ghost is going to pick Make Clear That You Won't Compromise Who You Are, and for Azuna, I'm going to pick Tell Him Exactly What Concerns You.
Thank you for your insight, everyone. I believe I know what I must do now. Then let us fetch you parchment, quill, and ink. Fortunate for you, fortunate that you have us, you know, for we emissaries are never far from instruments of the post. Why, I shall even provide you with Valentine's Day themed stationery. It's done. Now all that's left is for him to read it. My darling is likely in the gentry's ward. I know he enjoys sitting in solitude on a bench not far from the gates. He'll be there like as not. <laughs> then that's where we'll, we shall try first. We'll be back with his response as soon as we are able. Tell me, bird. Love's work awaits. <laughs> I'm gonna take a drink of my coffee. Okay. Oh dear, I'm so fidgety. I can't sit still for my nerves. No, I can't take this any longer. I refuse to stand idly by while my future is decided without me. That does it. I'm going to the gentry's ward this instant. Alois, you can't... And she's gone. Our duty as emissaries of love and affection demand that... You see, Lovelorn lasts through this trying time. I shall meet you at the gates of the Gentry's Ward. Okay. Um. <clears throat> it's all the way up there. Um, easiest route. Shortest route seems to uh, go to Lancer's Guild and go up. <laughs> I'm so small. I'm sorry to have run off again like that, but I just couldn't wait around twiddling my thumbs another moment more. We have for you a letter for one Miss Alois herself, Kupo. A missive from my love. Thank you kindly, post moogles. Perhaps it's not my place, but if I may. <laughs> Alois thinks a great deal of you. We watched her as she wrote that letter you now hold, and we could see plain as day how much she cares for you. If there is love to be found in this world, it's there, in every word she has put to that page. <laughs> the heart and its intricacies are my forte, 
I admit. But if you've even half as much affection for her as she has for you, then what you two share is something wondrous. I can only hope... I only hope you can both weather whatever trouble is coming your way. The heart is at my forte indeed. For one who claims such a thing, you show remarkable perspacity in the matter. You are quite changed from the move I once knew. Call me impressed, Koopa. You are good to concern yourself over my and Alois affairs. Your kindness does you a great deal, a good deal of credit. She's hiding behind the post. I'm hiding behind her dress. I shall pen my response this instant. Can I trust that you will deliver it straight to her once I've finished? <laughs> you serve at your pleasure. Your trust is not misplaced in us, good sir. Did you hear that? He's going to reply. We should return to Mia Keto's amphitheater at once. I don't want to be here when he sent our post mogul friends all the way back there. Yes, it would be rather awkward were his letter to have no recipient. Let us explain the situation to Lisette and wait for T and Kupka's delivery. Okay. Back to the Lancer's Guild. I still get lost, but I'm slowly being able to look at the maps and know where I'm going. When I'm having a good brain day. When I'm not, I still have to be like... Open the map, study it. Oh, I'm there. Okay. Our eminent emissary of adoration and affection is with us once more. And now that we are... Assembled, we have only to wait for the custodians of Azol Meal's reply. I feel sick to my stomach. What if I've angered him? What if he calls up the whole engagement? We have returned, and with your beloved's painstakingly penned post and paw. That was almost a tongue twister. I was wise to take your advice, Astrid. He thanks me for taking into consideration his position in life, but says that I need overly concern myself. His family is, as he puts it, below the salt, and though they're not as well healed as any other house of their standing, they're not fully so fuss fusty. He says that there's no need to live a life I'm unaccustomed to, but that if I wish to learn more about his lineage and social circles his family occupies, that he would do so with me. Isn't that thoughtful? I have come to ensure my letter has reached you and see that you have re and see if you have yet read it. After all, you did the same for me. It would be unkind to not return the favor, no? Aw, oh, there he is. That's so cool. Oh gods, how embarrassing. You caught me spying on you, didn't you? You're embarrassed? For what, pray? I found it endearing, my darling. 
Ah, these companions of yours, do they assist you in writing to me? Then we are in your debt. I love how it's perfect with the little hearts right there. I think that was planned. Along with the little hearts on the side here, on the left, and then on the right. Alois, my love, what say you to tea at the Carline Canopy? There we can discuss our future. A conversation which is long overdue, I should think. Thank you, my friends. Where would I be without your help? And I promise yours will be the first invitations we post once we uh, we post we've settled on a day. Once we've settled on a day. I could like see the once, but my brain wasn't registering it for a second. Goodness gracious me, do my eyes deceive me? Pukti Pico, your your palm. Oh, she's got a heart now. That's cool. Why, it's adopted the very shape of the season and is lovely beyond compare, Kupo. And tis much of a muchness with mine, or so I flatter myself to think. <laughs> I can't rightly explain it, but seeing those two together brought a flutter to my chest, a spring to my wings, and the next thing I knew, my palm began to tingle in the most peculiar of ways. It's just such a marvelous thing to know that we had a hand in ushering Ezol, Neil, and Alois' story into its next chapter, and to think it was all performed strictly through the art of post. Affection mystives are more than just the silly folderol I assume them to be. I see now that they show what's in our hearts like nothing else can, and we emissaries are their trusted custodians. That we are, Pukti. Only do remember that letters require more than just love. They are also in need of names and addresses. And speaking of names, perhaps you might bestow upon one upon a certain chocobo. Think of it as a show of not only kindness, but of love too. <laughs> a show of love, you say? I suppose you're right. I was never able to recall the names given by my Mughal acquaintances, but I bet I could arrive at something that actually sticks. I will give it some thought. Make sure I've done this bird justice. Aw, happy bird. My once foolish fledgling has wings of her own at last. Excuse me. How proud I am to see you soar. You are a credit to the emissaries of Ardor and affection with your heart-shaped palm. It is my most sincere honor to have you among our ranks. And I pray that you will continue this most revered work. I would love nothing more, Koopa. What joy to be blessed with so many couriers, and in the season of sublimity, sub sublimity, no less. It is heartening indeed to watch our numbers grow and grow, for with so many we can ensure that or ardor and affection accompany all the fair creatures of this realm where their journeys take them yay and i got the the barding for the post mobile <laughs> so now my bird can look like a postman a post mobile i should say <laughs> she been on so this is what it looks like okay. then there is this over here which is a um, repeatable quest. And it's these cute little quests 
that uh, you don't really go anywhere and you just stay put, but you still take on like um, requests and make decisions, and it's cute. Here, let me. Th there's only four of them, so let's do those. Better letters. Hook T Pico appears to, have, to be beset with troubles. Tiny, I knew you would come. You've a marvelously convenient talent for appearing when we're in need, don't you? Anywho, troubles afoot. Word has spread to, of our previous endeavors, which under normal circumstances would be cause for celebration, but not so today. We've been inundated with letters from across the realm entreating our aid with all matters of vexations. Our fellows have left me alone to feel these pleas, but I can't see to all this by myself. Please, won't you assist me in bringing succor to the hearts of the weary? I made a tiny little list of those who have written to us. No need to see to their troubles in any particular order, mind you. Just try not to let a request slip through the cracks, yes. Now, while I was doing this, I had to make sure that I remembered the order that I was taking these in. Let's see, there's only four. So. <clears throat> the first one we're going to do is the Emissary of Pen Passions. You would see to what plagues my heart? You are far too godly, Tiny. I confess that Eloise's joyful union touched me in a way most unexpected. It sparked within me jealousy of all things, for in her happiness I saw reflecting my own desires. Yes, tis true, I am here to speak of my own beloved, the man with whom I wish to spend all my days and nights, the very gentleman to whom I am betrothed, one Sir Hortz Hortfins. Then, yeah. The festivities have run us both off our feet, leaving us not a spare moment to while away together as we once did. It vexes me terribly, yet I cannot speak of it to him. I would flush like a schoolgirl and tie my tongue into knots. Instead, I mean to pour my woes onto parchment. <laughs> oh, this explains a great deal. At first I couldn't understand what was upsetting you so, but now it's all clear as crystal to me. Right then, on to this letter. First, what style should she write it in? Let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to say, fill it with prolix paragraphs and poems, as is her want. And then Silent Ghost is going to do, keep it simple and straightforward. And how should she word her vexations? And then I'm going to go forthrightly, and Silent Ghost is going to say, be coy about them. <laughs> there, tis done. For better or worse, the missive is penned. And all that remains is its delivery, which I will attend to right away. <laughs> Goodness me! No sooner had Sir Hortens read your letter that he, than he made a feline for the nearest door to race to your side, Lisette. It was all I could do to keep him from stampeding through the streets. A small miracle he had the presence of mind to even hold a pen. <laughs> Why do you dance around the issue at hand? Be playing with me or I will never understand. Heavens, perhaps it would have been wiser to be more forthcoming with my issues. Oh no. Oh no, while irrespective of this non-committal answer I've received, I am grateful to you 
for advising me on this matter. Oh man. <laughs> Your assistance has proven positively indispensable. If you need to find an inclination, do come by again. There's always more to be done after all. I'll make it right with Silent Ghost because I've done all these before with um, my main. Back again, I see. The heavy hearted of the realm will rest easily knowing that you are on the case. Now then, which of these destroyed Eorzeans will you assist this time? I thought they were all pretty much the same. Oh no, well. <laughs> uh, the Nameless Adventure. Oh no. We of the Adventurer's Guild seek to post a letter to our guildmaster, Mother Mjorn. Though we're yet an untrained and unblooded castle of adventurers, it still grieves us tremendously to admit that we sought her aid in a task we bungled not several nights gone. We fear this blunder of ours will lower us in her estimation so abominably that we may never work again. We are determined to set this all to rights. But the question is how? What words will move Mother Mjorn so that she will not see us as the lumbering dolts who stepped in it? Oh no. Oh, that is a pickle. Count yourself lucky though, for you're in the presence of a reno renowned adventurer. One who most assuredly understands well the problems you face. So, Tiny, what advice can you impart on our flustered friends? Well, show con... Show country con rich and gratitude in equal measure. <laughs> and what would convince this mother Mjorn to provide them with more work? Uh -oh. That failure is a novice's best learning tool. Oh, please don't mess up. Here, tis writ at last. Then I shall see it, see to its safe and expedient delivery. <laughs> Part of my tardiness, Mjorn was kind enough to set out tea for me, and I could hardly refuse such an offer. It warmed my heart to see such money. Bisons. And now that I reflect on it, such hospitality, too, is one form of love, isn't it? But I digress. What is Mjorn right? Oh, no. After that first one, now I'm worried. What a relief it is to read this. Oh, good. She has seen how steadfast our convictions to the guild are. Convictions to the guild are. By hook or by crook, we shall not disappoint her. I, for one, am afire with determination. Your advice has rung true indeed. Thank you for your wisdom. We you shan't forget it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the little cat girl. All right. And he says the same thing again. Alright, two more. And then I will end the episode. After the first time, he just repeats when you end the quest and when you first pick up the quest. The Winsome Pajal.
Fancy seeing you here, and fancier still that you're the one to assist me. My conundrum is that, as ever, my brother and I are concerned with Con E's well-being. We thought to write her, but I know not what to say. An ah ruins n has lifted not a digit to help. I would ask her to be mindful of her health, but does that not sound rather fussy? Even more so when couched in dear sisters and form formal prose. Though I suppose Khan E is both formal and fussy herself. What is more, I haven't much practice in the ways of penning properly worded misters. My sister is, as I mentioned, a touch on the fussy side and holds manners and decorum in highest regard. Little doubt that she will read my word with a rather critical eye. You speak of Connie Senna, the elder seed seer? She is revered among our kind. To think I will soon be delivering a letter to her. What an honor! But enough about me. We're here for Ray O. Senna. Tiny, how do you think she should go about this? Oh no. No need to stand on ceremony and be frank about your concerns. Oh no. I like how the, the other move was like, hmm. Very well, but who should we say this letter is from? Rhea Osana may be the one composing it, but it was both her and her brother who meant to ask after her well-being. Hmm, what are your thoughts? It should be from the person who wrote it. There, I've finished. Might I entrust its delivery to you? Why, of course. And away I go, Koopa. <coughs> the Elder Seedsia is a wonderful woman, as many have said. She saw how nervous I was and put me at my ease immediately. Your sister is lovely indeed. Uh-oh. And I'm glad to hear it. Now, let's see how she replies. Oh, this is not what I expected her to receive. Oh, no. Though she acknowledges our concern for her health, she prattles on about this and that and the other thing, lecturing me all the while about proper postal decorum. Oh, no. Oh, well. It was a worthy attempt. While I had hoped for a different response, I am grateful for your help all the same. If you will excuse me. Hopefully it was Silent Ghost to be a better response. Okay, last one. And I'll show what the prismatic hearts do. The one who dreams of the wider world. Greeting, sir. My name's Elaine, and it is an honor to meet one such as yourself. For you see, I have dreams of becoming an adventurer too. Oh, to think of all that you've seen, all the lands you have walked, how incredible. But as for why I'm here today, well, I want to write a letter to Kupka Koop to thank him for his support. Whenever I feel low, like I want to give up on my dream of seeing the world, Kupka is there for me to lift my spirits. A message for Kupka Koop? Hmm. So tiny, how do you think she should start it? Thank him for all his encouragement. And how should she finish the letter? Remind him not to overwork himself. <laughs> A 
I've taken your words to heart. I only hope this letter is enough to show Kupka how much he means to me. I'll make sure it reaches the right hands. Or paws, rather. It's cute. Please let this end on a good note. If only you could have seen the look on Kupka's face when I told him who had written it. He couldn't stop twirling through the air. It was adorable. But don't tell him I said that. He was so touched he managed to find time between his main deliveries to craft a reply, which I have here. Oh, he writes me to apologize, saying that he never meant to cause me worry. An apology is the last thing I wanted from him. I think he might have misunderstood the intentions of my letter. Oh, no. Well, we'll speak soon enough, and I'll straighten all this out. Thank you for taking the time to help me, Tiny. Farewell. Oh, no. Oh, well. <coughs> okay, so... Uh, I hope you'll be able to see it well, but technically this is supposed to be like two people doing it at the same time, but I'll show you. See, it's one half of the heart and then... But that's what that is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, like I said, I promise to play other games besides Final Fantasy uh, holiday events. <laughs> but anyways, that's going to be all for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please stay safe, stay happy. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!